This is the Samsung Galaxy S25 Plus disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Taking a look at the SIM tray, we can see a gray rubber gasket around the opening. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the glass backplate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Internally, it looks to be a familiar device. There are now 21 Phillips screws that have to be removed. Now the battery cable as well as the rest of the cables can be disconnected. This flex cable connects the main board to the screen. So if you needed to replace the screen, you wouldn't necessarily have to disassemble the phone from the back. You'd be able to just apply heat to the front where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then pry the old screen off as well as disconnect the flex cable from the other side. However, it may be a little bit more difficult to reconnect the flex cable to the replacement screen when reapplying a new screen. The easier way would be to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself giving access to this flex cable, at which point you can disconnect the flex cable from the screen and then heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath and pry the old screen off. This is the bottom speaker assembly and there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening. The linear haptic feedback motor or vibrator motor is located behind the speaker in the enclosure. These two flex cables connect the main board to the subboard. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. They have changed the design of the pull pouch from the previous models. Here's a better look at the 4900 mAh battery. And in my opinion, this pull pouch is easier to use compared to the previous version. This is the top earpiece speaker assembly. Here's the speaker itself. And there's an antenna board on the corner. So taking a look at the main board, we can see the 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 50 megapixel primary camera, 
as well as a 10 megapixel telephoto camera. The main camera and telephoto lens are the only ones with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, and the LED flash is located here. Looking at the other side, we can see the proximity and ambient light sensor, another microphone located next to that, as well as the camera connectors on the back which can be disconnected by popping them off. There is also a graphite pad on the back to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we see a thermal pad which sits over the RAM that's seated over the processor. The ROM or onboard storage is located next to that. Looking at the copper vapor chamber, we can see that it runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard, and it is slightly bigger than the one of the S24 Plus. There are two Phillips screws which are holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we see the primary microphone located here, and the charger port next to that with a red rubber gasket around it. The SIM reader is located on the other side. This is the flex cable for the volume keys and power button, so if you need to replace that, just gently peel off the flex cable, and lift up and pull out this metal bracket from inside of the frame. As for the buttons, those can be pulled out of the frame. The 12 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place with a cure in place gasket, so if you needed to replace that, you would have to take a razor or an X-Acto knife and gently cut the glue around the camera to pry it off and remove it. And this is the 5G millimeter wave antenna. Not all versions of this phone will come with this antenna. Only regions which do use the 5G millimeter wave technology will have this 5G antenna. But it doesn't mean that the ones which don't come with this antenna won't have 5G because all versions of the phone are equipped with a sub 6 GHz 5G antenna. Now for anyone who's worried about accidentally inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone you don't need to worry, since both microphones and filters are seated above the holes, so they won't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.